Welcome, everybody, to our podcast. I'm Bob Hutto. This is Kevin Clark, and uh, we are here in the Preacher Study. Mm -hmm. We call the podcast from the Preacher Study. Mm -hmm. We're taking a Bible, uh, studying from the Bible, just going through the book of Ephesians, and mm -hmm. uh, it's what we usually do. And uh, we've come to chapter 5, right. which discusses the relationship between husbands and wives mm -hmm. and responsibilities of husbands and wives. We t thought we would talk a little bit about marriage, just in more general terms, uh, this session, especially talk about some attitudes that we right. bring to our marriages and that manifest themselves in our marriages sometimes. And there are attitudes that are harmful to marriage, mm -hmm. and there are mm -hmm. attitudes that are beneficial to marriage. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to talk tonight uh, during this podcast um, about some attitudes that are detrimental to marriage. And uh, you can, uh, if you're watching and listening and engaged with us, uh, you might be thinking ahead and mm -hmm. thinking about some attitudes that maybe you've seen or maybe you've experienced in your marriage that have been detrimental and what we might say and what we might do to avoid those. And if they are a problem, what we might do to improve the situation. Right. So today we're just going to talk a little bit about some attitudes that are detrimental to marriage. Absolutely. And then there certainly are. There's some biblical uh, wisdom about how we need to control ourselves and things we need to avoid. And uh, having the wrong attitude is going to produce all kinds of chaos, uh, bitterness, uh, you know, just an atmosphere of uh, just at each other's throats, that sort of thing. And it's interesting if we can control ourselves, control our emotions, and, and get these attitudes that we're going to talk about under control, how much better our relationships will be. And they'll improve uh, almost overnight because these things are toxic to right, relationships. Right. You know, marriage is very important to us, those of us who are married. Uh, it's uh, fundamental yes. to our happiness and to our well-being. If our relationship with our spouse is not good, if it's filled with bitterness right, or resentment right. and mm -hmm. things like that, mm -hmm. well, then that, we're miserable in that Absolutely. situation. Yeah. Uh, it, good marriage and good family mm -hmm. is foundational to the society Absolutely. that we live in. And in some ways, foundational to the church. Good, strong families make good, strong churches That's right. as well. And so we really want to work on building our marriage and developing mm -hmm. our marriage so that it will be what God intends for it to be. And right. if it's what God intends for it to be, it will be it's for our good yeah, as right. well. Right. I've thought this many times, Kevin. I, I think it's true. To be a good husband, if you can be a good Christian, exactly. you'll yeah. be a good husband. That's right. That's right. So I think yeah. of mm -hmm. the Sermon on the Mount mm -hmm. as mm -hmm. really a good guide for mm -hmm. marriage. Mm -hmm. uh, now, Jesus doesn't say, right, say it right. in those explicit terms. You know, right. it's not, I want to teach you how to be a good husband or a good wife. Mm -hmm. But I really believe that if, if, if I'm not a good husband, what I need to do is work on being a good Christian. That's right. And if I can become a better Christian be a good husband, and develop yeah. mm -hmm. Christ-like attitudes in myself, mm -hmm. well, then that'll make me mm -hmm. a better husband. Mm -hmm. What do you think, Kevin? Absolutely. I mean, it's so true. If you're a Christian and you're being Christ-like, you have the restraint of a Christian, the long-suffering of the Christian, the control of the tongue of a Christian, you're not getting angry and blown up over everything, you're thinking about the welfare of others. These are all general principles that apply to so many different relationships. But here's the interesting thing, Bob. A lot of times we don't apply them to the most fundamental relationships, yeah. which is those with our loved ones. So we sometimes will treat other people, people of the world, better than we do our spouses yeah. because we're not applying those principles that we use out in the world to our own families. Right. So we're very concerned about the impression that we make on other people right. and what they think right. of us. Right. And so we want to portray ourselves in the best positive light to total strangers. But right. when we get behind closed doors, sometimes we're not that concerned yep. about the impression that we leave on our husband or our wife. Right. And, uh, you know, we relax and mm -hmm. we yes. kind of let our guard down uh -huh. and we show uh -huh. our true selves sometimes <laughs> and to our, to our detriment, to, That's a shame. to the harm yeah. of that Absolutely. relationship. Absolutely. Well, the first attitude that I, I want to raise, I mm -hmm. want to talk about a little bit, is just, just plain selfishness, right. just self-centeredness. It's very destructive to a marriage. And so here you have two people and they're bound together. They live mm -hmm. together. And uh, one of them is selfish or they're both selfish. Right. And that's not going to make for a happy marriage. That's not going to make for a good relationship. Selfishness right. is simply devotion to self first. Mm -hmm. A focus on getting what one wants to the neglect of or even at the expense of someone else. So if I'm selfish, I'm going to get what I want. I'm going to get mine. <laughs> And, uh, right, you know, right. if, if I have time or resources left over after I get mine, right. maybe 
my, my wife can benefit. Well, that's yeah. just pure selfishness and self-centeredness. It it's the opposite to a willingness to serve. And mm -hmm. so I imagine we'll talk about serving. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We talk about attitudes that benefit a marriage. But selfishness is just an unchristlike right. attitude in, yeah. in general. So if we can learn to be less selfish mm -hmm. and more selfless, then that'll make our marriage better. If we can get up in the morning and think, how can I make her right. life better? Exactly. Or if yeah. you're a woman, and yeah. how can I make his life right. better? How can I make her life easier today? Right. What can I do that will be helpful to her uh -huh. today? Uh -huh. Even if it puts me out or it's uh -huh. inconvenient to me, right. how can I help her? Absolutely. And if she say, how can I be of help to him? Uh -huh. Now that now you, now you got something you Amen. can work with Amen. and something that, a relationship that will thrive and right. be a benefit to both. Why don't you talk about well, selfishness I, a little bit? I, I couldn't help but think about Philippians 2, 3, That's three right. 4. So when you talk about selfishness, those are the verses that first came to mind. So let's just read those very briefly. Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. Let each of you look out not only for his own interests, but also for the interests of others. So we have a couple of prohibitions. Don't do anything out of selfish ambition, and don't be the kind of person that's only looking out for your own interests. And we apply this, yeah, obviously it has general applicability to all relationships, but now we're applying it in the marriage. You can't be the kind of person who only thinks about what's best for me. How do I want to spend my time? How do I want to spend my money? Uh, I, what do I want to do in terms of what I'm comfortable with? Uh, decisions, what restaurants we go to, I mean, even small things. Right. These things add up. If you're always demanding your way, giving no thought for what would make my wife happy? What would she prefer? How would she like to spend the day? How would she like to spend the weekend? Where would she like to go for vacation? I mean, just being cognizant and aware of somebody other than yourself, that's going to make the relationship go a lot further. On the flip side, if you're always thinking about through the filter of what I want to do, I mean, I've seen folks when it comes to their time, they work all day, and then you would think, well, you're going to come home and spend some time with the wife. No, I'm going to go out and play ball with my boys, and I'm going to do bowling on Tuesday, and I'm going to do something else on Wednesday and, and, and Thursday and Friday. And you're always going somewhere else, and there's no time spent with your wife. Well, that's not fair. And then to add insult to injury, perhaps you have kids, and she's dealing with the kids and managing all that, and you're out doing what you want to do, giving no thought to, you know what, maybe she wants to go out and be by herself at times yeah. and, and go shopping or do whatever right. she wants to do. Right. So we have to be thinking about the interests of others, as the Bible says, not just yourself. Well, I thought we talked about the Sermon on the Mount a moment ago. What a good sort of manual for mm -hmm. marriage it is, really, for all aspects of life as a disciple of Jesus. But how about Matthew chapter 7, verse 12? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And everything, Golden therefore, rule. treat yeah. people the same way yeah. you want them to treat you. Yeah, that's and right. so we're really cognizant of that yeah. when we're at work, perhaps, yes, right. or we're doing some of these other things just out in the general public. Right. But do we, do we think about let me treat my wife the way I would want her to treat yes. me, whether yes. she's treating me that way or exactly. not. Exactly. But let me right. treat her the way that I would like for her to treat me. And if we can, that's a selfless attitude. That's right. That's right. And of course, that's going to make for a much more pleasant right. uh, relationship and one that, that is healthy and will Amen. work to the benefit of both. Right. Absolutely. I mean, you think about it, if, if, some, if two people are devoted to trying to serve each other, what can I do to make this person happy? What, what are the things that may, and, and it may be small things. It may be washing the dishes on a regular basis. It may be keeping the lawn clean. It may be keeping the house tidy, whatever. And it may be, like you said, there may be things that you think, you know what, from my standpoint, I don't really care. It's not that important. That's irrelevant. It's important to her or it's important to him. And because it's important to my spouse, right. it becomes important to me, whether I would do that on my own or not. So what we do is we think, well, it's not important to me, so it shouldn't be important to her. Right. That's not the standard. That's right. <laughs> well, selfishness manifests itself in different ways it within a relationship. It does. The desire for control. Yep. Yep. And so some people are just controllers. You know, they That's want right. control. They want everybody to do mm -hmm. the things that they want done in the way they want them done when they <laughs> want them done. And, and so, you know, if we're a natural controller, right. and sometimes this comes naturally to people, uh -huh. well, we need to recognize that in ourselves okay. and try to try to back off and not be so controlling but yeah. to give way to the right. wishes of, of other of, of other people Amen. you mentioned a moment ago what am I going to do I might work all day but I've got some spare time in mm -hmm. the evening mm -hmm. now what am I going to do with mm -hmm. my spare time mm -hmm. well I, I want to do this and that right, and that right. and accomplish this and that uh -huh. and we're neglecting our spouse yes. uh, and sometimes at the expense of them, right. uh, we just make assumptions about them, mm -hmm. and they're, you know, the, well, you know, if that's what I want to do, well, she ought to go along with that. Mm 
-hmm. Well, mm -hmm. so what's the result of that? Well, bitterness, exactly. right. resentment, right. anger. Mm -hmm. And so you can see why, you know, why are you so bitter? Right. Well, I live with a man who yeah. only thinks of himself. Exactly. Or why are you so angry? Right. I live with a woman who only thinks of herself. Right, right. And so there, it's just impossible to have a good, healthy relationship yep. if we're self-centered. Yep. And these things build up over time, right? So it's not just one incident, but it's the repeated instances. And, and you wonder, okay, maybe you come in and something unloads, the, your other spouse unloads on you. And you're like, well, what did I do? It may not have been that specific incident. It may have been you know, five or 10 years worth of putting yourself first. And finally, the person just came unplugged and, and said some things that are harmful. We'll talk about that in, in a minute, maybe. So how do you, you know, we, we've talked about Ephesians chapter 5, that the husband is the head of the wife right, and, right. and she should be in subjection. And so he's the leader. Right. So how do you balance being leader mm -hmm. and being head mm -hmm. and not being selfish? What, what do you yeah. think the goal of that or this, what's the template for that? Well, Christ. And, and Christ was always looking out for the welfare of the church. Everything was about what's in the best interest of the church. So it's not a selfish kind of leadership of, you know, getting my way and dictating the shots and doing what I want to. In fact, if you look at it, it, it talks about husbands ought to be looking to nourish and cherish their wives, verse 29, just as the Lord does the church. And think about that orientation. It's thinking about what does the church need? What can I do to build up the church? What can I do to promote the welfare of the church? That's what Christ had in mind. And he gave himself uh, for that, ultimately. His own, uh, that's the greatest sacrifice one can make is to give yourself. Why? Because he was concerned about the welfare of the church. He says the husband, likewise, needs to be attuned to the needs of his wife. He needs to be looking out for that, M nurturing, developing, promoting growth. So the kind of leadership we're talking about is servant leadership that we see exemplified based, best in Christ. I mean, here it is, Jesus in John 13 who clearly is the master, but he's washing the feet of his disciples. Now, that makes no sense from the world standpoint of leadership, but in a biblical sense, that's the very essence of leadership because he's looking to the best welfare of those he's serving. Even those who are his followers, he's still looking at their welfare. He's the master, they're the disciples, but he's focused on what would be best for them. And Jesus was all that. You'll never find Jesus ever doing anything that was selfish or self-oriented or just he was always looking out for the good of others. And what, and what response did that produce in his disciples? Mm -hmm. Well, they want to follow yeah, absolutely. him. And so he's bending his knee yeah, to serve them, to right. wash their feet. Right. He's willing to give. And so what's their, what's their reaction? Right. Yeah. They want to absolutely. follow him. Absolutely. And so if you're a husband... And you yeah. have a wife, and yeah. you're willing to give right. and sacrifice, and you're concerned for her. Uh -huh. She wants there her response. Go. Will naturally be, well, I want to be cooperative, <laughs> and and uh, I, I want to support him right. and work with him. And so, being selfless uh -huh. is really the way uh, to have a a good, strong, thriving relationship, and it's to the well-being uh, of both. Amen. And so I just think about, you know, being selfish, how that might manifest itself, mm -hmm. people getting there, trying to get their way, people mm -hmm. trying to control. Uh, if there's extra money, here's, yeah. a, here's a guy, yeah. he's selfless. He thinks about, well, well what do I want? Mm -hmm. And so he goes out and spends impulsively, for right. example. And, right. and then next week, you know, the mortgage is due. And right. so, you know, well, <laughs> I spent that money on right. something that I wanted. And so right. If a person is selfish, it can be very dangerous, mm -hmm. not only to the health of the relationship, mm -hmm. but to the family mm -hmm. as a whole. And, and, uh, and so it's just a you know, terrible, destructive attitude that people bring into a marriage sometimes. And we just have to be willing to give of ourselves right. for the good of others. Let me throw another cool. example out there, one that I've seen. I'll call it family obligations. But obviously, you know, when two people come together, two different families are coming together, right? And so you've been used to spending time with your family. You're there for certain holidays. You're there for certain birthdays, things of that nature. And I see as, as couples come together, sometimes they never change that. And there has to be a change. And that now you have brought on a new family, right? New family obligations. You need to treat your mother-in-law as you would treat your mother. You need to treat your father-in-law as you treat your father. But sometimes people miss that and they still basically selfishly say, well, I want to be with my family on this particular holiday. And we do this all the time. And, and, and sometimes it gets so bad as you have spouses that don't even go to family events on the other side. 
Uh, we can't have that. We, we've mm-hmm. got to be together. We've got to understand, yield some, right? So you're not just looking out for your family from which you came, but you bought into you, right. a new family that you have to take care of and you have to be concerned about and visit and spend time with and have an emotional connection with. So it can't be all about, well, I just enjoy my family and we've done this for years and years and we're just going to do it. And we're on, we get together on Thanksgiving and July 4th and we're not going to worry about what you know. Yeah. There has to be some give and take. Right, right. Yeah, so that selfishness is just contrary to the principles of being a disciple, mm-hmm. and it's really harmful in, in many ways. We're particularly talking about marriage and the destructive force it can be within marriage. And you're right, you know, it's just a matter of give, give mm-hmm. and, um, uh, and, you know, being, being willing to please the other, pleasing your neighbor right. or your spouse right. rather than yourself. If we can do that and we can work together, mm-hmm. you know, we've talked about that before, working right. together, well, then we can have a good, happy, satisfying, healthy relationship to the good of each other and to the good of our children Amen. And, and, and so forth. Amen. Well, our time's out for today. Just, you know, if, uh, if, you, if we look at ourselves and say, you know, I've been a little selfish, mm-hmm. I can see that. Mm-hmm. Okay, mm-hmm. work on, work That's on right. it. Just say, okay, I'm, yeah. I'm going to work on that. We can, you can get better right. at, at that. Sometimes a person can be selfish and, and not see it. Yeah. And yeah. so, you know, if, if, if you're aware and perceptive yeah. and right. pick up on the clues, yes. well, then yeah. maybe you, you can come to a, a realization, oh, you know, I see what the problem is. I've, I've been selfish. Right. And I need to yeah. change that. Exactly. And, and we can work on that. We can right. get better. Amen. Appreciate your uh, contribution today, Kevin. I hope mm-hmm. the discussion has been good. Amen. We'll continue this discussion in our next session. Let's close with a word of prayer. Let's do it. Dear Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you so very much for this opportunity that you've given to us that we've had to discuss your word and what it has to say about such an important relationship as the marriage relationship. We want to thank you for that gift, for it truly is that. We recognize it as a divine institution that you've created and established and you regulate and govern. And we hope that we will conduct ourselves, those of us who have been so blessed to be entered into a marriage in in a way that's in accordance with thy will. We're talking about uh, things, attitudes that can be destructive to marriage. In particular, we spent a lot of time at this time talking about selfishness. Please help us to be less selfish and to be more selfless. Please help us to spend time uh, learning from your word how to be the kind of person we ought to be, learning from the example of your son, Jesus, how he was always looking out for the welfare of others, especially for those uh, that belong to his church, uh, his disciples, his followers, always uh, willing to humble himself, willing to look out for their interests, not his own interests, and really willing to make the ultimate sacrifice, give up his life for the welfare of others. Uh, that's the example we have, to have that kind of servant leadership for those of us who are husbands and for those of us who are wives. Uh, please help the wives to to also be selfless and to look out for the needs of their husband and respect their husband and figure out ways that they can please him. If we both, uh, as husbands and wives, look to each other and think about each other and think about the things that will please them, that will go a long way towards developing harmony and bliss in the marriage and create a godly environment in which we can bring in kids and raise them in a sense of peace. Uh, so many houses have so much acrimony and shouting and yelling and animosity. And, of course, the kids absorb that and take that into the world and stunts their emotional development. Please help us to learn not to have that kind of environment. We want a godly home, a home in which uh, peace reigns, in which people use soft answers to turn away wrath, a uh, a place in which uh, people have self-control. And most importantly, as we've talked about uh, this during during this session, uh, people who are looking out for the interests of others. Please help us to have better marriages, and we will have the blessing that you intended for it to be. We thank you for this and so many other blessings you've given to us, most especially your son who died for us. We thank you for his blood that was shed on the cross. We thank you for the opportunity to be reunited with you as your children, as your soldiers, as your servants, and to have the inheritance of eternal life lying ahead. We ask you to continue to be with us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.